Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview to the chapter on intelligence. I'm going to have you start your assignment for this week's module, and then I want to address some glaring oversights that were not included in your reading for this week. So to get started, I want you to think about intelligence. And what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, so I have this question in front of you. I want you to try and answer them. I don't want a textbook or Webster's Dictionary definition of intelligence, but I want you to think through what does intelligence look like? Some people say, well, I, I know an intelligent person when I see them. Well, how do you know? What kinds of behaviors or characteristics do they demonstrate? And I want, you to ask, I want to ask you this question before you get into the readings, before you watch more of this video, and because I just want your kind of intuitive response based on your lived experience. So this is going to be the first question for the assignment for this module. So pause this video, actually write it down, and then you will use that for the first question in your assignment. So go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. Okay, hopefully you have written down some behaviors or characteristics that you think define intelligence. Now that kind of question has been asked to many psychologists and non-psychologists alike, and generally their responses can fit into three categories. People think that intelligence is marked by practical problem-solving skills, verbal skills, and social competence. So kind of compare your responses to this and see what you think. Now, I would argue there's no right or wrong answer here, but I'm going to pose some questions to you because I would argue that we don't value these three things equally because the, these are individuals, the individuals pictured are those with Williams syndrome. Williams syndrome is a genetic disorder that affects um, the development of the brain and the body. So you can see there are some unique kind of physical characteristics that are demonstrated. And there are also some very unique brain or cognitive characteristics that are demonstrated. So individuals with Williams syndrome typically score very low on traditional IQ tests. They're considered to have intellectual deficits. They often lack what some people might call common sense. They um, struggle sometimes to care for themselves. They need to be cared for by others. And yet they, are, they have impressive verbal and social abilities. So a very high vocabulary, both that which they know and that which they use, and then have very strong social competencies and that they tend to be just very happy, kind, and caring people. So just quickly, I'll read to you the results of a study by Dickens and Rosner in 1999. This study looked at individuals with Williams syndrome and said that 100% of them were kind-spirited. 90% of them often sought the company of others. 87% empathized with the pain of others, 84% were caring, 83% were unselfish and forgiving, 75% um, kind of never went unnoticed in a group. They just stand out because they're so gregarious. Um, and then 75% are happy when others do well. Now, I don't know what those numbers are in a population that doesn't have Williams syndrome. That would be important to know. But nonetheless, it would appear that they have strong social competencies. And yet most people would likely consider these individuals to, to you know, not be or not have high intelligence. Now, Einstein, on the other hand, was said to have fairly um, poor social competencies or social skills. He was said to have no to little tact. Um, he was found said to have very low social empathy, um, didn't really understand or seem to care for the suffering or pain of others, and yet obviously had great practical um, problem-solving skills, could solve novel problems, think very analytically uh, about complex issues. So despite being poor in social competencies, but high in these competencies, most people would argue that Einstein is a very intelligent individual. Finally, just one more example. This um, man you see here uh, is 
Kim Peek. He passed away in 2009. It was believed at the time that he had autism spectrum disorder, but has now believed that he had FG syndrome, which is a chromosomal disorder. But he had an amazing memory. He was said to be able to memorize 90% of the things that he came into contact with. He was um, the the inspiration for the movie Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. And pictured here, he's looking through a phone book and he would memorize all of the names and numbers listed. And yet, he struggled to take care of himself, he needed support, and he had um, a lack of social understanding and competencies. And so most, again, would look at Kim Peek and say that he was not necessarily an intelligent individual. Oops, sorry. So I want you to think about those different things as you read this week's reading on intelligent. You will learn more about how we define intelligence and how we measure it. But I think as we move forward, it's very important that I point out, as I mentioned, a glaring oversight in this chapter. It's very important to know that there is a that seeking to understand and measure intelligent in its own right is a very valuable pursuit. And yet it has a very dark history um, and, and the ways in which it has been used. And so I want to say that very clearly and specifically. Many would believe that intelligence is a natural adaptation to the environment. Even going back to Darwin, it was believed that the fittest survive, right? And so intelligence is a way in which people adapt and survive based on the context of their environment. And yet when we're thinking about something like intelligence, it can be very difficult to find a measurement that could measure an adaptation in every different kind of environment or in every different kind of culture. So most forms of measurement that we have today are not particularly culturally sensitive. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. I was trained to conduct intelligence tests with young children. And I remember distinctly that one of the questions showed, it was a picture of a stamp, I'm sorry, it was a picture of an envelope, and the stamp was on the left side of the envelope. And it said, what's wrong with this picture? And the child had to identify that the stamp should go on the right side. Well, think about that even now, giving that to, let's say, a three to five year old. Long, long gone are the days for many where they're sending things, particularly at that young age. And so would you say that a child who answered that correctly in 1980 is more intelligent than a child who answered that incorrectly in 2020? I don't know, right? But something to think about. And then also be aware that when we talk about environment and we talk about culture, that we intersect many cultures. Um, we're not talking about environment necessarily just in terms of our region, but we're talking about income, race or ethnicity, gender, religion, and all of those things, sexual orientation, um, all of those things influence uh, you know, the things that we are exposed to and how we adapt to it. So that in and of itself is a problem that I want to highlight. And then um, with that said, People have used intelligence in a way that's not culturally sensitive and yet as a way to systematically, purposefully, strategically oppress, marginalize, um, and eliminate certain populations based on some of these cultural differences. So use intelligence as a way to say that this particular population of people are inferior or even feeble-minded, as it was once referred. It has been used as an argument to, as you will see in the video below, sterilize certain populations of people, to restrict immigration from certain population of people, and was used for um, to try and segregate individuals so that they wouldn't reproduce, so that only the intelligent, quote-unquote intelligent, um, could continue to survive and thrive. So I didn't feel like that was said very clearly in your textbook and we really need to know about these um, aspects of our history both as a culture, as a nation. This was very prominent in European Western um, culture 
And so it's important that we know that. It's also important that we know that as, as, our, as a discipline in psychology. So please review the video below so you can learn more about how intelligence tests were used in very tragic and oppressive ways. So beyond that, um, continue with the reading. Again, as I said, intelligence in and of itself is not a bad thing. We often think about it as a culture. We're fascinated about it. Um, and so I hope you learn more and discover more new things in this week. So take care, everyone. Happy learning.